Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we are continuing talking about God's discipline proves his love for us. We're hanging out in Hebrews chapter 12, and yesterday uh, we looked at verses 3 through 9, and we started talking about three ways to change your mindset on discipline. The first one we said is we have a role model in Jesus on how to endure the pain of discipline. Uh, we looked at when he was a before he was arrested, when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he asked Peter, James, and John to pray for him, and yet he just cried out to God, just asking him to help him, uh, and just said, hey, if there's another way to remove this cup of suffering, please do it, but yet I want your will to be done, not my will. And yet he was so just filled with anxiety that his, his straight, his droplets of sweat became blood drops. And, you know, friends, that just... Uh, I mean, that's stress. So if maybe you're in that season today where you feel like that and just be encouraged today that that's Jesus understands because he's been there. Second thing we looked at yesterday from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 3 through 9, that we can help change our mindset on discipline is that instead of asking God why when we're in a season of being disciplined, ask God, what can I learn from this season? What can I learn from this season? You know, friends, there's a lot of uh, growth and maturity when we can change that simple mindset, that little tweak from instead of asking God why, we ask what can I learn from this? Uh, you know, the Bible talks about in Job, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And this side of heaven, there's just things we all don't understand at times, no doubt about it. Yet, I'm thankful that we can trust God even when we don't understand Him. Then a third thing that we got started on and didn't get to completely finished, so we're going to start back there. A third thing we can learn from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 3 through 9, when we try to change our mindset on discipline, is that God in, di corrects and He disciplines only those who are His children. God corrects and disciplines only those who are His children. So, friends, uh, we, we looked at a great quote by Jerry Bridges. The purpose of God's discipline is not to punish us, but to transform us more and more into the likeness of Jesus. So I got to ask you today, is God transforming anything in your life or the way you handle things, the way you react to things? Because, friends, the longer we're a follower of Jesus, we should see some transformation. And unfortunately, I see some Christians, yeah, they attend a lot of Bible studies, they hear a lot of sermons, they listen to podcasts like Hope is Here and radio programs, and yet we don't see transformation. They still let the same things kind of, you know, get under their skin, and they, they say things out of emotion and anger instead of just submitting those things to the Holy Spirit and asking God to help give them the fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 10 and 11 says, For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in His holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. There's a couple things, friends, I want to share from that. One, I want to look at verse 10 there. It says, you know, our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how. And, you know, as I read that preparing for this uh, talk today, um, you know, I, I just think I need to share this. Uh, there's somebody listening or watching on our YouTube channel today that you need to forgive your parents. You need to forgive your parents. I mean, they did the best they could. Um, you know, parents are human beings, and, uh, you know, they make mistakes. But I, I really do believe, for the most part, most parents do the best they could. And uh, maybe today you just need to forgive your mom or dad, and if they're still alive, uh, man, it would be great to even have a conversation with them. But if not, maybe if it's possible to go visit their grave site. But if not, you can just do what they call the uh, open chair um, conversation where you sit there with somebody and you look at them and they, uh, you know, you talk to them like they're sitting in the chair and just have an honest conversation about, hey, you know, you really hurt me, but I want to forgive you because 
Jesus has forgiven me for a lot of things, and the Bible says to forgive so that you will be forgiven. And I had to do that before with a situation once in my life. But I'm also thankful that my dad, a few years before he died, just one day out of the blue, just said, son, I want to ask for your forgiveness. Kind of caught me off guard, to be honest. I was kind of like, well, dad, uh, I'm not sure what you want to ask for forgiveness about, but you know, what, what's going on? He said, well, I just want to ask for forgiveness for three things. One, I'm sorry that I didn't teach you more about Jesus. Um, that, you know, I didn't become a follower of Jesus to almost 50, so I'm sorry that I didn't do a better job with that in your childhood when you lived under my roof. Secondly, uh, I want to apologize to you because I didn't teach you how to save. Um, I mean, we weren't in debt, but uh, thankfully, you know, any of that, didn't have any issues with debt at all. Praise God. Thank you for the Lord and for my mom that did a great job with our budget, made every dollar stretch to the max. But uh, I didn't teach you how to save. And third thing is, uh, I didn't teach you how to have fun. And so the first one, I said, Dad, that's not an issue. You know, hey, uh, man, Mom was great, and you've more made up for it the last 20 years since you became a follower of Jesus and have taught me so much. So please, uh, you're forgiven on that, and you didn't need to extend an apology. On the thing about saving, yes, I do need to do better on that, but that's not your fault. That's mine. And on the have fun thing, uh, yeah, you're right. I, I do need to grow in that area. But once again, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm in my, uh, uh, I just to turn around 50 at that point. So that that's on me, not you. And yet I can say today uh, I've done better with the saving. I really have on that, thankfully. But the having fun part is still a struggle for me because especially being in ministry and having two ministries, one is Pastor Gardenside Christian Church and Hope is Here Ministry, uh, uh, there is always uh, people to help, and uh, I love to, you know, pastor and encourage and listen and counsel and speak places, and uh, I do still struggle with that one, but once again, not on me. I'm not on my dad. That's on me, and so God's put some people in my life that are trying to help me have a little bit more fun over this past year, and I'm so thankful for them, but it was just such a heartfelt conversation with my dad, and uh Man, maybe as a parent, if you're still able to, just ask your kids for forgiveness. And it could be awkward like it was with my dad, but man, it's a powerful moment. I'll never forget, never forget that. A second thing that we can learn from uh, God corrects and disciplines only those who are in his children from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 10 and 11 is when we learn from discipline and apply it in our lives, we will have more peace internally and eternally. You know, friends, when we do apply that discipline, we do. We just have more peace inside our hearts, our soul. We're just more peaceful in our body and it, it, our emotions. It actually is a, a big positive of putting discipline in areas of our life. And then eternally, you know, uh, man, we have those spiritual disciplines. Uh, you know, friends, one day uh, when we get to heaven, man, uh, I mean, it's it's going to be beautiful. There will be total peace and joy and love and uh just to remind you, that's the goal, friends. That's the goal. And uh, this is just a dress rehearsal for heaven. And we're preparing for that as we all walk to the gates of heaven as a follower of Jesus. Love, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I use this at funerals quite a bit. It says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You know, friends, may that be said about all of us. I pray that will be said about all of us. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. We've only got about a little over four minutes left, but I want to get into a topic real quick that uh, I'm calling fight through fatigue. Fight through fatigue. And, you know, uh, man, it was something I learned as a college basketball coach at Western Kentucky University, but it was a game changer for me and has really helped me out over the past 30-plus years since I learned about this in college basketball coaching. And I'm actually applying this to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 12 through 13. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. I love it. It says take a new grip with your tired hands. Okay? <laughs> It can be tired, it can be your same old the tired hands, but just saying, hey, take a new look, a new grip, and 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 decide to say, I'm gonna strengthen my weak knees. 
And friends, when we do that and ask God to help, he does just make out a straight path. And you know, one of the takeaways from that is, friends, others are watching our examples of the disciplines of faith. They truly are. John Wooden, the UCLA men's basketball coach who won 11 NCAA championships, said, reputation is what others think of us, while character is who we truly are. Mm, say it again. Reputation is what others think of us, while character is who we truly are. You know, one of the good things is we get a fresh start every uh, day to be disciplined. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. You know, friends, that, that's good. Just, I mean, be thankful that God in His infinite wisdom divided up our calendar into 365 days, B.C., before Christ, A.D., after death. Okay? And sometimes the 24-hour period, let's be honest, it's, it's just not good. A lot of challenges, just disappointments, painful things. Yet I'm thankful that we get a fresh start every 24 hours and that God's mercies never cease and he's always faithful. Great is his faithfulness and his mercies begin afresh each morning as it promises in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. But friends, here's one of the things I've learned if I'm going to fight through fatigue. we got to get a friend to help us push through. Recently, we had this big back-to-school bash on a Saturday night at Gardenside Christian Church in Lexington where a pastor, if you don't have a church home, would love for you to come join us on a Sunday morning uh, sometime at 1030. But I'd gotten bronchitis, and, uh, man, I was struggling. And we had put a lot of planning and work uh, leading up to this event for the past several weeks in August, and uh, finally that event came, and I Knew I was feeling bad and cough. Went to the doctor a couple days before. Had bronchitis. Gave me a antibiotic. Gave me inhaler, cough medicine. But I was struggling that Saturday. I thought there's just no way I can do this. So I kept delaying. Finally, like I got to get there by two two o'clock to uh, help my my coworkers and my, our wonderful volunteers help get this thing set up. And uh, I just dragged myself to the shower and just before I did, I sat on the bed and said, "Lord, you got to help me." Then on the way, I just thought of a friend I know that uh, she's a prayer warrior. And so I reached out to him and just said, hey, I am struggling. I, I just feel awful. I'm so weak and afraid I'll start coughing. And I got to help get ready for this back to school bash. Can you pray for me? And man, they just prayed the house down. And uh, it was just a powerful prayer. And, uh, you know, about a three or four minute prayer. And by the time I got there, I just could feel God's spirit. I felt refreshed and renewed. And uh, I'm so thankful, friends. Uh, I'm so thankful for that friend. And I want to encourage you today, man. If you're struggling and you're having a hard time fighting through fatigue and you find yourself being short with people and being critical and negative and, you know, friends, we just, that's one of the things as Christians, sometimes we give ourselves an excuse on. And, uh, man, I just don't think that, the, I know it doesn't honor God. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And uh, friends, we got to quit being so negative and critical as followers of Jesus and gossiping and have more discipline with our tongue because discipline's required to maintain peace and relationships. And, you know, I love Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. I'm going to close with this today. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. So I want to encourage you today to be a peacemaker and make sure you choose to do that and, uh, man, just know that when you do that, it'll bring peace in your life and others. And most of all, it pleases your Heavenly Father. We're out of time, but thanks for joining me. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.